everyone, and welcome to the seventh annual UAGC Early Childhood Conference. I see a lot of people in the chat that have been here before, and we are so happy that you are joining us again. We're going to go ahead and get started. Our presenter tonight for our kickoff is Nick Young. Nick has been sharing the joy and enrichment of interactive music and movement with children for over 30 years. Nick began his career as a preschool teacher with a passion for music education. After witnessing the social, emotional, and educational benefits of interactive music for children in early childhood, Nick began his career in teaching children trainers, teachers, and providing them with powerful and engaging music and movement tools and curriculum. He now teaches online and in-person music and movement classes in classrooms all over the United States. I have had the opportunity to work with Nick several times, and Dr. Hild and I have had him on our podcast. He's amazing, and we cannot wait to hear your session tonight. Nick, thank you so much for being here, and next slide, please. So my name is Dr. Stephanie Heald, and I am thrilled to welcome you to the seventh annual Early Childhood Education Conference hosted by the University of Arizona Global Campus. We are thrilled to have you here with us for the next two and a half days to have some great sessions. Dr. Tisha Shipley and I will be hosting this conference and are just so grateful you are here. On the screen, you can see a disclaimer that we want to just give you a moment to read. We kindly request that you have your attention for a brief moment. In the spirit of transparency and respect for our community, we have some information we'd like you to read in our on-screen disclaimer. By taking a few moments to read through the disclaimer, you empower yourself with the pertinent information regarding the boundaries of our knowledge sharing environment. And next slide, please. Please also take a moment to read through this slide. Then together we can embark upon these exciting sessions while we push boundaries and leave an indelible mark on the ever evolving landscape of early childhood education knowledge. Nick, without further ado, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, great, thanks for that lovely introduction. And it's such a pleasure to be working with you guys and to be here with you. You know, I'm going to, I want to just see if I can see our Zoom room really quick while we're here. Okay, so I see, I just haven't been able to look at the chat or anything. All right. Okay, because I, when I'm sharing my screen, it doesn't let me see that, but that is fine. All right, let's jump back over there. If anybody needs to tell me something, just give me a, a wave or something so I can say hello. All right, so I'm Nick Young. Thank you, Tisha, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, so yes, I'm an early childhood music educator. I have been uh, leading music groups in preschool classrooms for over 30 years. I started out at my mom's family child care in Long Beach, California, and uh, she had a Montessori home school that I worked at for five years as a teacher. And I uh, love to do music with the children there. And from there, it grew into uh, a lifelong uh, journey with music uh, and mu movement for children. Uh, so I have a music program where we teach classes in preschools. And I also work extensively with programs like Head Start and other organizations that provide uh, early childhood education. I'm a frequent presenter at conferences and and I love working with early childhood educators. Those are my favorite people. Besides preschool age children, my favorite people in the world are early childhood educators. I have so much respect for you. I am one of you. I, uh, I love the work that we do and I know how important it is. So this workshop is uh, Music and Movement Equals Social and Emotional Development. It can also be called Music to Spark Joy or to Bring Joy into Your Classroom because it's all about joy and celebration and fun. And also, uh, the fun, amazing, magical thing about early childhood music is that even though it's something that's fun and intuitive and easy and great to have in your classroom for so many reasons, it's also super developmentally beneficial for your students. So we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna do a lot of interactive music in my workshop today. 
And that means we get to have lots of fun and move our bodies and learn and play together. So uh, the tools and skills to bring to this workshop are to be active and interactive. Uh, we want to make sure that our music time that we present in the classroom is active, engaging, and developmentally beneficial. Uh, so that is that. So um, today we're going to have uh, the things that we want to accomplish is we want to learn how to lead interactive music and movement activities in, in your classroom. So this is a workshop that also will help you to bring these activities into your classroom. Uh, lead rhythm sound activities. So we're going to we're going to explore rhythm sound activities with hand percussion instruments. Uh, we're going to use musical storytelling, which I'm sure you're excited to find out about. And we're also going to talk about tools for managing our students during an active and engaging music and movement time. So uh, before, let's see, let's do a little warm up. We kind of warmed up already, but let's warm up a little more. Uh, there's a song that we did at the very beginning. I'm going to do it with you right now. So all my friends in the music time, or in our workshop today, I want you to shake your hands like this. Now, you are invited to get as engaged and active as you feel like doing in this workshop today. If you just want to be seated while you do the activities, that's totally fine. If you want to get up and move your body, that's great. Turn up the volume on your, on your computer and make it nice and loud and get involved and engaged. So before we do this, I just want to warm up a little bit. Shake your hands. Shake, shake. Here we go. Shake, shake. Shake your hands, shake, shake, shake your hands, shake, shake, shake your hands. Now get up, it's time to stand up and tap your toes. Tap, 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 tap your toes. Side to side is how it goes. Tap your toes all in a row. Tap, 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 tap your toes. Now jump and clap, clap your hands. Jump up high and clap your hands. Jump and clap and clap your hands. Jump and clap and clap your hands. Touch the sky, touch the ground. Turn and turn, turn around. Touch the sky, touch the ground. Turn and turn, turn around. Now stretch, 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 stretch up high. See if you can touch the sky. Take a breath, <gasps> give a sigh. Stretch, 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 stretch up high. Good job, my friends. All right, so let's see. What are the developmental benefits of early childhood music education? There's the physical aspect because this is active, interactive music and movement. As you just noticed, we were tapping our feet. We were clapping. We were jumping. We were turning around. So we were getting physical. We were moving our bodies. And that's one of the wonderful things that we get to uh, help our children enjoy is physical movement and all the benefits that come with that. You know, exercise, gross and fine motor development, all the things that come along with getting active and engaged in music and movement. What else? Social and emotional development. So I'm sure you intuitively realize that music and movement is, develop is beneficial for children's social and emotional development. There's so many ways that it does this. Well, how does that work? A child who's involved and an interactive music and movement time is learning all kinds of social skills, like how to cooperate with their peers, how to control their body, how to make sure they're keeping their body safe, keeping their peers' body safe, how to cooperate together to create something magical, like a musical story, a rhythm, uh, a song. Uh, when they're moving their bodies together, they are absolutely boosting their social and emotional development and in so many different ways, which we're going to get more into a little later on. Their language development. Oh my gosh, this is like the most powerful tool for developing language for children that you can, I, I think of all the different tools that you have at, in your disposal, music and movement has got to be the top of the list because you know, music and language go together. When you are listening to your favorite song on the radio, you remember the words because you're hearing it in the context of melody and rhythm and music, and it just somehow programs your brain with the words. It's the same thing happens for children. They're moving their bodies. They're shaking their hands. They're tapping their feet. They're moving, they're wriggling their shoulders. They're hopping like a frog. They're crawling like a spider. They're flying like a bird. All these things, they're associating language and movement and physically interacting with language in a way that's so much more powerful than if they're just 
passively absorbing language. It's wonderful to have your students sit down quietly while you read them a story, but what about what if they're interacting with the story in a way that's physical and musical? Can you imagine how much more powerful that is for their language development? Absolutely. Their cognitive development. I'm going to read you a little bit later on about the research that's been done that shows that children who are involved in music education of young age get a powerful boost to their cognitive development, which encompasses so many different things. And multilingual. We were just doing a song, Spanish Echoes, where we were combining English and Spanish words. So this is a great opportunity for children to learn a language besides their native language. So as we are getting involved in music and movement and making this a big priority in our classroom and something that we do every single day with our students, is this something that's going to add to your burden as a teacher? I know you have a huge empire, a huge list of priorities and um, responsibilities that, that you're responsible for every day. But what about if we think of music and movement as something that doesn't add to that list of, of, of obligations and responsibilities, but actually makes the whole thing work better and makes your life easier as you're using music and songs to transition through different activities throughout your day, uh, as you're using music to help your children develop these important uh, aspects of their development. You know, it's something that's so intuitive and easy and fun. Uh, you know, it helps us to create a positive affect in the classroom, to create opportunities for positive interactions between students, between teachers and students, and between students and their parents and their family at home. This is something uh, that we don't think of as adding to our workload, but actually making our lives easier as teachers and making us more effective teachers at the same time. So we're going to be exploring four different aspects of music, uh, early music education. We're going to be exploring first imaginative and directed movement, and those are songs, special songs that we use that are intentional songs that have been created specifically for the purpose of engaging children in imaginative movement and directed movement, and we're going to learn about that. Uh, instruments and rhythm sounds. We're going to see what kinds of instruments we can use in the classroom, and we're going to learn about how we can use instruments and music notes for children to start to learn how to read and play music notes, or what we call rhythm sounds. And this is a fantastic pre-literacy activity, pattern recognition, all kinds of ways that that's a powerful uh, element of our program. Musical storytelling kind of speaks for itself. We're going to use, we're going to combine storytelling and music and even dramatic play and instruments and voices to help to tell musical stories uh, in collaboration with our students. So they're not just passively uh, enjoying a story that you're telling or reading to them. They are involved in the story. They're making the sounds of the story with the instruments and their voices. They're even uh, in engaging with dialogue and even moving their bodies to act out the different parts of the stories. And then class management. This is so important. This is actually the laboratory that where all this powerful social and emotional development gets uh, happens, you know, because we want to make sure that we are using the right kinds of techniques, class management techniques. So we're not stifling our students' creativity, but we're actually giving them opportunities and choices where they are given those uh, that opportunity to grow and develop in those social and emotional ways. Okay, so here we are getting started. As I said, imaginative and directed movement. Um, right now, I wanna show a little video because I know what you might be saying to yourself at this moment. You might be saying, Nick, I love the idea of doing all this intentional interactive music and movement with my students, but I see that you have a guitar and you are playing your guitar and you are doing your songs with your guitar. So how am I gonna do this because I don't play guitar. So as a teacher who might not be a musician, how do I do that? Okay, so I'm gonna stop this share and I'm gonna share a quick video. This is just a three minute video. I'm gonna grab that one and share my screen. There it is. Share the sound is turned on. Okay, so this is me leading a music group uh, without playing the guitar so that you can see how this works for you as a teacher in the classroom. Follow my voice. 
Sigue mi voz. Good morning. Buenos días. Big rock. Big rock. Roca grande. Roca grande. Waterfall. Waterfall. Caída de agua. Little boat, little boat, so you can get an idea of how you can lead interactive music and movement with your students in the classroom using recorded music. And I want to put something in the chat right now that is, are a couple of videos, links to videos. And this is a little homework for you because I want to give you something that you can use with your students right away Here's a couple of videos from my YouTube channel, and I and then I only see I don't see any other posts in the chat, so hopefully I'm in the same chat as you guys. But you'll see two links there uh, in the in the chat right there. Um, if you click those uh, before the, we're all we close it out today, then that'll open up a couple of videos of me leading some songs that you can do with your students. And there's directed movement and imaginative movement there. So that'll be something that you'll be able to use right away with your students. All right, let's grab that back up to the slideshow. Okay, imaginative and directed movement. All right, so here is a song called Animals on the Move. Now, I wrote this song, I hate to even contemplate how long ago I wrote this when I was, you know, first starting to develop my music program, but it's still something. I did it today, this morning, at a school where I was doing a music concert for some children uh, this morning. So uh, this is Animals on the Move, and I'm gonna go ahead and come back to my, to here, and I'm gonna grab that for my virtual background, Animals on the Move, there we go. Okay, so um, 
this song is okay great so yeah i'm not sure if i'm not seeing the same chat as you guys uh i don't see anybody else's post but i do see stephanie just reposted what i had posted there so hopefully you're getting that if not i'm sure we can email that to you guys and i think i also included a, a handout a digital handout a pdf awesome a pdf uh, handout that has information about all the things i'm talking about and and uh, some links to websites and things like that. Okay, so right now we're gonna be moving our bodies like some different kinds of animals. Now, this is an imaginative movement song. So when we do imaginative movement, that is a song where the children get to use their imagination and it's not just something where we tell them exactly what to do. We'll do an example of a directed movement song in a moment, but this is called an imaginative movement song because we're just saying, hey, crawl like a spider. There's a little spider down here. You can't see him. There he is. Okay, so when we do this song, I, I introduce the song. You always want to introduce the song really briefly to give the children an idea of what it is they're going to be doing in the song. So I say, friends, today we're going to be moving our bodies like some different kinds of animals. The first one is a spider. Show me how you crawl like a spider. But then I'm also going to use uh, one of my important class management tools, which is the invisible bubble. I'll say, put on your invisible bubble around your whole body. That means that your body will not bump your friends while you're moving. Make sure you move where there's room to go without bumping your friends. And right now, show me how you crawl like a spider. So imagine all the friends, just like we saw in that video, the children are moving around together in the music room. And you are also mo modeling the movements along with your students. That's very important. You're not passive in this. You're presenting the songs. You are moving your body. You may not want to do all the movements like crawling like a spider, but that's also something that's really fun to do with your students. So here we go. Spiders are creeping, woo! Spiders are creeping, whoa! Spiders are creeping, Spiders are creeping, creep around the circle. Stop! Now slither like a snake, snakes that slither, woo! Snakes that slither. Snakes that slither, snakes that slither, slither around the circle. Stop! Now swim like a dolphin. Dolphins are swimming, jumping out of the water. Dolphins are swimming. Dolphins are swimming. Woo! Dolphins are swimming. Swim around the circle. Stop! Now fly like a bird. Birds are flying all around the sky. Birds are flying. Birds are flying. Woo! Birds are flying. Fly around the circle. Stop! Now walk like an elephant. Elephants walking. Woo! Elephants walking. Elephants walking. Elephants walking. job my friends okay so that's an example of an imaginative movement song now let's do a song that is a directed movement song okay and I also have a question for our organizers I am I going for an hour and a half today or am I just going for one hour if you're able to let me know that would be super you are going for one hour Nick one hour okay all right let's speed it up here okay so directed movement thank you Trish uh, directed movement is when we are telling them, the song tells them about how to move their body. So um, in this one, we're going to really tell them specifically. So right now, tap your foot, tap one foot, make it bounce up and down. Now tap the other foot, make it go to town. Oh yeah. Wiggle your shoulders, turn yourself around. Okay, so that's a little snippet of a directed movement song. And don't forget to get those links in the chat because those have uh, examples of those very types of songs, maybe even those same exact songs in those videos. Okay, so let's move along here. We have talked about directed movement, imaginative movement. Now 
we are going to move on. There's our moving your body blues artwork. Okay, rhythm sounds and instruments. So uh, let's get out the instruments. Right now, I've got my instruments with me. I got well, some little shakers. Let me see, what instruments do we like to use in music? Oh, here we go. These are the instruments. I mean, not these exact ones. These are the ones I use in my music time, but I have some certain criteria that I use to choose the instruments I use. And this is trial and error over like 30 years, you guys. So you can believe I have tried them all. Uh, the reason I like these egg shakers is they're small, they're easy for small hands to hold, they're durable, and they're pretty much safe to use, and they're not too loud or noisy. So those are really great to have. Then we also have bells. Now, um, one important thing that I use to choose instruments is I don't want anything super duper loud. So I want my instruments to be all of an equal volume. So I don't want like a bunch of instruments and then one super loud type of instrument. For instance, cymbals, uh, the big cymbals, I do not care for those because the child is gonna have those and they're gonna play them as loud as they possibly can and it's gonna drown out all the other instruments and be too noisy. So we wanna choose stuff that's gonna be not too loud, all of a kind of an even volume and also safe to use. Now these, bells are nice because they are safe the, the the bell is really stuck on there well that's one important thing make sure that you get them they're super durable so the bell doesn't come off and it could become a choking hazard so those are nice uh these scrapers i love these they're easy to hold and easy to play you want to show your students how we play them by scraping out like that there's all kinds of ways that they'll use them but this is one important skill that we want them to have because we're gonna be calling on that particular skill later on. Uh, triangles are lovely. The triangle that you see on your screen is the one that I prefer and that I recommend. The one I'm holding is not because this one, it doesn't have the handle attached. You know, you'll buy a triangle and you'll see it just has a handle that loops around and holds on. But then once that handle comes off, it gets lost really easily. And then all you have is a metal triangle, which is not as great because the child holds it like this. It doesn't even sound like a triangle. So you want the kind with the handle that's attached. And then drums. I love this type of drum. It's durable and it's not too big. So you want to get stuff that's going to last. It's not too noisy, easy to play. They can play it all different kinds of ways, sitting down on the floor, on their lap, holding it. That's a great one. And then the, the fruit shakers are fun because they look like fruit and they are pretty durable and they're, they kind of fit into all the criteria, but they're not, uh, you know, those are fun to have if you get those. I just order mine online. Uh, so you can find all of these online and, I, and they're also in your handout. So if you want a reference for these, they're in the handout. Okay, so we like to do songs with instruments. Um, everybody, if you have an instrument handy, grab it. If you don't have one, you can just clap your hands. So this is a nice introductory song to instrument time. We pass out the instruments and then we, uh, we let the children play them as soon as they get them. Uh, we're all sitting down in a circle around the edge of the group and we say, here we go, my friends. Let me hear the music as we play our instruments. Let me hear the music as we play our instruments. Let me hear the music as we play our instruments. We play and then we stop. Let me hear the shakers. Let me hear the music as we play the shakers. Let me hear the music as we play the shakers. Let me hear the music as we play the shakers. We play and then we stop. Clap your hands. Let me hear the music as we clap our hands. Let me hear the music as we clap our hands. Let me hear the music as we clap our hands. We clap and then we stop. Everybody, everybody play together. Everybody play. Everybody play together. We play and then we stop. 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 We play and we play a whole bunch more. Woohoo! And in the full version of that song, of course, I do all the different instruments. Okay, rhythm sounds. This is awesome, you guys. You, I have two-year-old students that are experts at this, so don't think that your students can't do this. They absolutely can. And uh, uh, in your handout, 
you'll have these in your handout and you can print them out. Uh, I like to print them on colored paper and cut them out and laminate them. So you have a set of rhythm sound cards and it's nice to have three of each of the different ones. So let's do the rhythm sounds really quick. I'll use my uh, egg shaker. In fact, let me grab my rhythm sound background so you can see what I'm doing a little better. There we go. All right, so um, when I'm teaching online on Zoom, I use this background to do it. And I'm also standing up. I'm not sitting in a chair like I am now, but uh, I have these in my background, but it's nice if you're teaching in person to have them to um, in person actual physical cards. So uh, first one is ta. Let me see how many dots does ta have? One. So that means it gets one sound from your instrument. And we say ta. Whatever instrument they have, they play ta. Or if you're clapping your hands, ta. All right, now let's play a whole bunch in a row. Here we go. Ta, 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 ta. And stop. And now we have T, T. Let's count the dots. One, two. Two dots, two sounds. T, T. Let me see. I'll use my scraper. You can clap your hands or use an instrument if you have an instrument. Here we go. T, 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 and stop. Now we're going to combine the two sounds, ta and ti ti. So let's count the dots. One, two, three. Three dots, three sounds. I think I'll use my bells. Ta ti ti, 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 and stop. Woo, good job. All right, now diggy diggy. Oh my gosh, let's count the dots. One, two, three, four. Four dots, four sounds. Diggy diggy. Here we go. Diggy 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 and stop. And toe is one long sound. Toe, 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 and stop. Good job. Now, if you have the song, the rhythm sound cards, the physical ones, then you can do all kinds of really advanced, amazing stuff. As your students start to get really good at these, you're going to be adding on and making a longer, longer rhythm. Uh, let me see. I've got, well, I've got them here, my rhythm sound cards. I was just using them this morning. So let me show you those. All right. So I have, there's TT and Diggy Diggy and Ta. And so what you do is you have three of each of the different cards and you lay them down on the rug in your group space with all of your students sitting around the circle facing towards the center and you and they all have their instruments and so maybe you have two tts and two tas and you're saying t t t t ta ta t t t t ta ta and then you may add another one so you have three of each t t t t t t ta ta Ta. Then you invite a child to come up and mix them up and make a new rhythm, and you're like ta ti 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 ta ti ti ta. And then as they get better and better at this, you're adding in diggy diggy, and you just keep on making this rhythm longer and longer until it stretches across your whole rug, and then they're playing ta diggy 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 ti 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 ta ta ti ti ta. Toe is good to put one at the end. It's kind of like the period on a musical sentence. And uh, the friends get really excited. They get to help create the rhythms and they're using their instruments to play them. And uh, one tip about instrument time, like I said, when we do instruments, we have all of our friends sitting around the edge of the rug. We pass them out. We have a song going while we're doing it, maybe a call and re response type of song. 
So while I'm passing out the instruments, I'm saying, everybody, I say it first, you say it after me. Alligator pot, alligator pot, alligator pot, alligator pot. If I don't get some, I think I'm going to cry. And we do a song while we're passing out the instruments because we don't want to have any time during our music time where there's not something going on to keep the children engaged and keep their attention. And I'm going to talk about that a little more when we talk about class management. That's an important class management tool. We pass out the instruments and we say, friends, as soon as you get your instrument, I want to hear the music. I want to hear your sounds because, you know, we've chosen instruments that aren't too super duper loud. So it's not going to be cra too crazy loud. It'll be noisy. Absolutely going to be noisy. But we, we don't want to say, here's an instrument, but you can't play it. I just don't agree with that. I don't think that's reasonable for a three, four-year-old child to be handed a beautiful, amazing, magical instrument and then told they can't play it. No, forget that. We say, play it right away. And then as soon as we have passed out all the instruments, we do a song like we did, like, let me hear the music. Then we say, it's rhythm sound time. We start doing the rhythm sounds. And then we move on to musical stories. Let's see what else I've got here. Let me see. i got to get back to my slideshow. Doo, doo, doo. We're doing a lot of information in a quick amount of time here, guys. All right. So there's all kinds of different rhythm sound games. Uh, rhythm echoes is like when we do echoes, but we add the instruments and rhythms. So I might say, ta, 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 ti, ti, ta, ta, ti, ti, ta, 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 ti, ti. Okay, so there's just an endless, and then there's another fun game I like to do called Guess by the Sound. So as the children are getting familiar with the instruments, I'll do a game where before I pass them out, I'll have something like a blanket or something to, to where they can't see what I'm holding in my hand, and I have the instruments, and I'll play an instrument where they can't see it. I'll say, what instrument is that, my friends, and they have to guess. Shaker. What instrument is this one? It's the scraper. What instrument is this one, friends? And they get to listen and guess by the sound. And when they get really good at that, I might combine two instruments. What two instruments am I playing? Yes, the shaker and the bell. So they're, they're using their hearing in order to learn that. Okay, musical storytelling. Okay, so um, we're, um, we like to involve the children in musical storytelling. And as I was talking about before, we use the instruments to play the sound effects of the story. And we can also uh, use their voices to help tell the story. This one is the bird and the frog and the crocodile story. So in this story, the scrapers make the sound of the frog. Oh yeah, another thing we like to do when we have all of the instruments passed out is between different activities like a song, the rhythm sounds, a musical story, we're going to say, friends, pass your instrument to the friend on your left side. So they take their instrument, they pass it to the left. The person on their right passes them an instrument, and now they have a new instrument. So they're passing it several times during the instrument time, so they get turns with lots of different instruments. Uh, that takes a little bit of practice, because right away, if you do it without um, helping them at first, they're going to trade instruments, and that doesn't work as well as if they're passing it to the left. So you'll just have to go around the first few times you do that and show them, yes, you're passing this to the friend on your left, and then that friend is passing theirs to you. And uh, once you do that a few times, then they're going to get it. And then as you'll just say, pass your instruments to the left, and they'll pass them to the left, and then they have a brand new instrument in their hands. So this story, we're going to say, friends, in this story, the scrapers make the sound of the frog in the story. So all my friends that have scrapers, when I say frog, you're going to scrape to make the frog sound. And I show them how to scrape slowly and scrape outward like that to make the frog sound. If you don't tell them that, they're going to do this, which is fine, but we make a better frog sound if we go slowly and lightly and out that way. So we show them that. And we don't micromanage them with a lot of like making them do it a certain way that we think that they should. We may share with them, this is how I do it, and then let them explore it on their own. Eventually, they might even uh, share with their friends and kind of remind their friends, uh, you know, if they're playing the scraper when it's not scraper time, then their friend would say, no, it's shaker time right now. You know, they might start kind of uh, uh, helping each other to remember or learn those things. But we don't want to stifle their creativity by 
by micromanaging them during the music time. We let them have a lot of freedom about what they're doing and how they're doing it. And I say, okay, shakers, bells, triangles are the splashing water sound. Let me hear splashing water. And the drum is the sound of elephants running in the jungle. So the friends that have the drum, they're going to play the drum to make the elephant sound. And then we do a whole story where there's a bird and a frog, and uh, they um, are sitting by the river, and then a crocodile comes. It's very exciting. Another story that we do, and this one, we even get to involve them in dramatic play. This is the story of the grouchy monster in the forest. And I'm going to do this one with you guys right now. <clears throat> so uh, in this story, I'll say, friends, I need your help to tell the story of the grouchy monster that lives in the forest. In this story, the, if they have their instruments out, I might have them use their instruments to make the sound of the monster when he's growling and shaking the branches of the tree. And uh, I want to hear them growl like a monster. And then I also say, in this story, if I say, are, we gonna are you going to have a picnic at the park today? Then I say, my friends, you say, no, in the forest. So we practice a little bit so that they learn how to say that. And then if I say, I'm telling my friends, if I say, don't go in the forest, it's too scary, then you say, we're not afraid. Okay, and I'm even gonna, well, you know, it's, I think I'm gonna stop sharing and use my background so you guys can see me better when I'm doing it. Okay, and then we're pretty much ready to start the story. So here we go. Once upon a time, there was a grouchy monster who lived in a forest behind a big old tree. And every time someone came walking down the pathway, the monster would jump out and growl. Let me hear you growl like a monster. Roar, and shake the branches of the tree. Roar. Everyone who lived in the village nearby was afraid of the monster, the baker, the grocer, all the people that lived in the town, except for all my friends who are here in my music time today, they were not afraid of the monster. So one, time, one day they decided to have a picnic in the forest. So they got their picnic basket and they went to the bakery and they were picking out some bread for their picnic. And the baker said, are you going to have a picnic at the park today? Friends, what do you say? No, in the forest. And the baker said, don't go in the forest. It's too scary. What do you say? We're not afraid. Good job, friends. And then they went to the grocery store and they were going up and down the aisles of the store, picking out all kinds of yummy, delicious food for their picnic. And th at this point in the story, I will go around to each friend in the circle and ask them to tell me one kind of food they like to eat that makes their body grow big and strong. And then we put that in the picnic basket for later on. So we get all our food and the grocer says, are you going to have a picnic at the beach today? What do you say? No, in the forest. Oh, don't go in the forest. There's a grouchy monster there. We're not afraid. Awesome. So then they got their basket with all their food and they go into the forest. There it is right there. Going down the pathway and they pass by the big old tree. Out jumped the monster and he growls. Roar! And he shook the branches of the tree! Roar! But the friends were not afraid. So we did it even more. Roar! And they were still not afraid. And they said, Monster, don't you have any friends? And the monster said, No, and all I have to eat are yucky bugs. So they said, Why don't you have a picnic with us? And he said, Okay. So this is the part of the story where I'll go back to each friend and I'll say the food that they brought from the grocery store. So we have to remember, and if we can't remember, we can ask them to remind us, and they will definitely want to make sure that we talk about their food. So strawberries, bananas, grapes, sandwiches, apples, all the different food that we put in our picnic basket, and we, we mention all of it, and then we say we shared it with all of our friends and, all, and with the grouchy monster, and then the monster had a nice full tummy of yummy, delicious food. All of a sudden, he did not feel grouchy anymore. He turned into a friendly monster. And everybody said, yay! And after that, the monster had lots of friends, and no one was afraid to go in the forest ever again. And that's the end of the story. Good job, my friends. All right, so there's an example. And you can even have, as they learn the story and get used to that story, you can even have the friends get up and give them different uh, physical actually acting out to, for dramatic play 
you might say this friend is the monster and then this friend is the tree that the monster hides behind here's my friends here's the baker over here here's the grocer here's the friends uh, that are going to go on the picnic and they go around first to the baker and they get to interact with the baker and the baker says his lines in the story and it's sort of such a great uh, experience for the children to be able to do that and have that experience of dramatic play. All right, jumping back. Here we are. Okay. Okay, so social and emotional literacy. So we've heard, we've, we're gonna kind of start to talk about class management and how this ties in with social and emotional literacy. You know, one of the things you'll notice about the way I've been presenting the music time, the music activities that I've presented with you today, is I have a lot of enthusiasm and excitement and I'm expressing with my vocal inflection, my facial expression and my body language that I'm very excited and engaged with what I'm presenting. I'm not distracted. I am fully committed and, and, and I'm present for this music activity. And that's the way you're going to do it with your students. So um, that's really important because that kind of gets their engagement and that's how you keep their engagement throughout the music time. Uh, I call it getting on the Music Express. They all join on with you at the beginning and you want to keep them on the Music Express train while you're going down the track. If you let your train stop or slow down, then they're going to get off. And that means they're distracted, they're not engaged, there's other things in the, in the room that they're starting to get involved with. And uh, we want to avoid that for music because we want to keep them engaged in music time. So, in uh, early childhood, uh, professionals will understand the brain connections that occur when we are moving, imitating, and following directions. So these are ways that this, these kinds of activities have this impact on children's social and emotional literacy. There are six emotions that we want children to understand and know and be literate in by age five. And there's three levels of emotional literacy. So uh, when we're doing these music activities, we can really zero in on social and emotional literacy uh, and helping children to co-regulate their, their uh, emotions as well. So um, let's talk about, we've got five emotions and these five emotions that we want children to be literate in by age five, happy, sad, angry, afraid, surprised, and disgusted. And uh, you know, if, if I've been told by people that know better than I do, that um, if we can do anything for our students, if is, is to help them to learn the, how to express these feelings, how to acknowledge these feelings in others, and how to recognize them, the, that emotional literacy of being able to recognize them, recognize them in themselves and others, and how to express them and how to be okay when other people are expressing emotions. So here is, uh, you can actually make this into uh, a visual aid that you can print out and laminate and use uh, in your classroom. So I'm gonna do a song really quickly with you that I created uh, in collaboration with a colleague of mine named Tonya Hayes, who's a fantastic uh, you know, early childhood development uh, expert that I have collaborated with to create some of these social and emotional materials. Uh, this is a, a song where we're help we're inviting the children to express these feelings with their facial expressions. <clears throat> so, um, feeling faces. This is called feeling faces. Feeling faces, feeling faces. Show me how your face looks when you feel happy. Show me your happy face, everyone. <sighs> Feeling faces, feeling faces. Show me how your face looks when you feel sad. Oh, show me your sad face. Feeling faces, feeling faces. Show me how your face looks when you feel angry. Er, show me your angry face. Feeling faces, feeling faces. Show me how your face looks when you feel afraid. Show me your afraid face. Feeling faces, feeling faces. Show me how your face looks when you feel surprised. Oh my gosh, I'm so surprised. Feeling faces, feeling faces. Show me how your face looks when you feel disgusted. Ooh, gross. Feeling faces, feeling faces. Show me how your face looks when you feel happy. Awesome, good job. Okay, 
So here we are using uh, these wonderful, using music, interactive music, to help children develop their social emotional literacy. Using, you know, looking at uh, concrete photographs and identifying emotions. Uh, you know, um, there's so many different ways that this is important when we're uh, working with children. And what an opportunity to use music to do that. Um, I want to show you. I want to show you a song. Speaking of uh, helping children, kind of coming alongside that child who is experiencing some big emotions. You know, when you have one child or multiple childs that might be having an experience of these big emotions, we have an opportunity. This is an opportunity for them to develop their social emotional skills. So I want to show you this visual aid that is designed specifically for this purpose. Uh, let's see. Here we are. Oops. Let me grab that one so I can see the same thing you're looking at. There it is. Okay, so uh, these are cards that you can cut out and print out and laminate uh, specifically for this song. This is the calming down song. So if you have a group of children, you could do it with all of them at once. Or if you have one child, you can take them to your calming down corner if they're having just a lot of big emotions. And you have this visual aid ready and you have the song ready and you can sing it with them. And here we go. Take a deep breath. And let it out softly. Take another breath and count to ten slowly. One, two, I still feel angry. Three, four, I'm still a little cranky. Five, six, my body is calming. Seven, eight, now I am relaxing. Nine, ten, I feel better finally. Sometimes I just need to take a break. Sometimes I just need to stop what I'm doing. Sometimes I just need a hug to show me everything's okay. To help my upset feelings go away. So what, uh, I think you'll agree, what a powerful tool music can be for helping children to regulate and, and their emotions. You know, once they get familiar with that song, it's going to cue them in that they're going to start to be able to use those, that breathing and that counting to help them to start to relax and calm down. So we want to kind of move along here to our... Uh, class management section as we are kind of nearing the end of our time today. So let me grab the slideshow and let's move it right along to class management. Let's see. All right. There we go. So class management uh, tools for specific these tools. Now one of the reasons I think that not all teachers, early childhood educators, are using a lot of really visceral, interactive, physically active music and movement activities in their classroom is because they may feel that the class management challenges are not worth it. Like they're like, if I do these crazy active songs with my students, then my kids are going to be bumping into each other, bumping into the tables and chairs. There's going to be friends that are going to just, they're going to get hurting each other and stuff. And getting out of control and then I got to wind them down and it's a big hassle so I don't want to get all into that those big activities but I want to tell you with the right class management tools and techniques um, it not only is easy and fun but it provides a real opportunity for this social and emotional development that we've been talking about so we want to be you know we want to establish our position in the group uh, our leadership position without becoming a dictator as I said before, we don't want to be micromanaging, but we want to give the children freedom and choices. So as I said, the music express. We want, the, we want to get them on board. How do we do that? Well, when we're presenting the music time, we're coming in with a lot of enthusiasm and we're maintaining that energy and enthusiasm throughout the music time. So when I do music activities with children, I normally do 30 minutes of interactive music and movement. 
from the time I start to the end of my 30 minutes, there is not a pause. The, the energy is flowing without stopping the whole time. Uh, and that's what I think of as the Music Express. I don't want to stop my Music Express and give them a chance to get distracted. Uh, choosing the correct material. The music that we have been presenting in our workshop today is all interactive and the, the songs all tell the children what to do with their bodies in the context of the song. Whether it's tap your foot, wiggle your shoulders for a directed movement song or it's crawl like a spider, swim like a dolphin for an imaginative movement song. They're going to be, it's very clear and easy to understand uh, in this context of the song that uh, what the song is and how they're moving their bodies and you're reinforcing that by modeling the movements of the song along with your students so they see you moving and they're imitating you uh, so that's important uh, choosing the right material adjusting the chemistry of the group now what I think of in when I do this is uh, if I have a group of students and we're all doing tap one foot make it bounce up and down then I have a couple of students over here and they're starting to wrestle and elbow each other then I'm without stopping the song I say Johnny I've got a special spot for you right over here and I say move over here right now and I do it in a way that's not punitive it's not shaming him I'm making it special he moved his body over there all of a sudden he's not next to his friend that he likes to wrestle with and I've adjusted the chemistry of the group and everything is running smoothly now there's a whole bunch of challenging classroom behavior techniques that I get into. Uh, we don't have a ton of time left, uh, but basically I can sum it up just by giving choices. You know, I say, show me that your body's ready for music time today. If a child's not being safe in the music time, I might have to give them choices. If they're not able to follow choices, I may have to ask them to take a break. Okay, so we're winding it up with just a couple of minutes left. Friends, I want to make sure that you get a hold of the handout that was provided to you in, uh, you know, if you haven't gotten it yet, get a hold of it because it's going to have all kinds of resources in there. And uh, I want to make sure that you have those resources. It also has my contact information. So make sure that you contact me if you have any questions. I'm available to help you. And uh, I am super excited to have been with you today. Let's finish up with a song. All right, so we're gonna finish up with a song right now. Don't forget to click those links in the chat so you can get your, your videos that you can use to lead some music time activities with your students. And uh, let's finish up with a song, here we go. Thank you friends for music time, we've had a lot of fun. Thank you friends for music time, our time is almost done. Stretch your arms above your head and reach up to the sky. Take a big enormous breath and let out a big sigh. Stretch your legs in front of you and wiggle all your toes. Bounce your knees up and down and touch your knee with your nose. Stand up on your feet so tall you're taller every day. Take another big breath and say a big hooray! Woo, good job, my friends. Hey, you know what? I think there might be a slide at the end of my slideshow that I need to show. So let's take a look. Is there, is there? Woo, yes, there is. Okay, there's my contact information. You know what? Um, I'm sure you'll get it in the handouts. There we go, that's the ending slide of our slideshow. Woo, how much fun did we have today? Thank you so much to, uh, you know, to everybody at the University of Arizona. Thank you so much. I have enjoyed this so much. Thank you, everybody. I'm expecting to hear from you all when you are starting to use these materials and you have questions. Reach out to me and let me know. I love to talk about early childhood music education, so I'm here for you as a resource. Thank you, 